Good evening, and welcome to worship on this Monday, Thursday evening as we continue to walk as a community through this Holy Week, um, and we walk with Jesus to the foot of the cross. We thank you to those of you who are watching online um, as well as in person. Tomorrow night, we will have the Tenebrae service over at North Wasika Lutheran Church at 7 p.m. It is a service for progressive darkness. For those of you who are worshiping virtually, um, the Good Friday service will be posted on YouTube um, by 7 p.m. tomorrow. So we encourage you to watch um, online as well. Easter Sunday will be at both churches at 845 at North Wasika Lutheran in person, either inside or outside, out in your cars, or it will also be posted on YouTube. And Easter worship at Faith in Janesville will be at 1015 a.m. And that will be in person. And again, online worship will be posted um, to our YouTube channel. Let us begin this service for Monday, Thursday, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join Melissa in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 468, Around You, O Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people, and in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading from Scripture on this Monday, Thursday evening is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Paul writes, For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In that same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here ends the first lesson. The second reading is according to the Gospel of St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around them. He said to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You have called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. One of the biggest surprises 
for me during this Lenten season has been hearing the old, old story of Jesus' suffering death in a very new way. Almost always before when we go through Lent, I always think of the things we typically hear emphasized. Things like the betrayal of Judas, the weakness of Pontius Pilate in the face of an angry crowd, the denial of Peter, the disciples falling asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane, the jeering of the crowds and the taunting of the chief priest and the soldiers at the cross, the utter failure of all of those around Jesus. But this year I heard something different. This time I also heard additional stories. I heard the kindness and courage of a woman who anointed Jesus with perfume and washed his feet with her hair in preparation for his death and burial. I heard in these stories the story of Simon of Cyrene, who helped Jesus bear the awful weight of the cross, if only for just a little while. I heard the story of those at Calvary who saw Jesus' thirst and offered him something to drink. And I heard the story of the women who stood by him in Jerusalem, who according to the gospel had provided for him, and who stood by and with him even in death when there was nothing left to do but weep. Women who were among the first to visit the tomb on that early Sunday morning. They came to anoint the body of their Lord and their Savior. I heard the brave confession beside Jesus' cross of the centurion, who at the end of that terrible day echoed words of truth and praise. And finally, I heard the story of Joseph of Arimathea, the only member of the Sanhedrin Council who dared to ask Pilate for the body of Jesus so that he could give him a dignified burial, quite different from the humiliating and scandalous way that he died. That's a very different side to Jesus' passion story, isn't it? And it was in those very human, very small acts of kindness and compassion, in the reaching out of one human being to another, that the kingdom of God was breaking in, even amidst the bigger backdrop of suffering, betrayal, and death. We see that same kind of act being lifted up tonight, this time from Jesus himself as the disciples are gathered together in the upper room, even knowing their coming betrayal and denial, even knowing that an argument that his disciples had right before this, that one, which one of them was the greatest, Jesus still got up. He got down on his hands and knees. He took out a towel, and he showed us all the gift of compassion and how to have the heart of a servant. He did for them what someone else had already done for him. He washed their feet. More importantly, he reached out to another human being and he made their journey a little easier. In doing so, he taught that the way of the cross, the way of God, the way of the church is the way of compassion, the way of love the art of reaching out to others, one person at a time. Love one another, says Jesus. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? But there's a reason that Jesus gives it to us as a command. As human beings, as people prone to sin, the truth is, we don't find it easy to love. As the early disciples' own actions on this very night show us, being called to love is one of the most difficult things to do, sometimes even almost impossible. Tonight's lesson begins not with the loving act of Jesus, 
But what immediately precedes that is an argument amongst the disciples who are trying to discern which one among them is the greatest. And is so often the case with discussions or arguments like this one. In order to make the point, someone has to be a winner and someone a loser. And people have to put each other down in order to be able to come out ahead. Now we might laugh at those disciples' actions and think how silly they seem given what Jesus is about to undergo. And we would be right. But the question is, don't we oftentimes do the same thing? You and I live in a world which has become increasingly divided over a whole number of issues. One only has to look at the past several elections to see just how divided that we as a nation have become. And as we become increasingly polarized as a society, don't our discussions often resemble that argument that those early disciples had on this night so long ago? Aren't we also sometimes preoccupied with who is right, who is best, who is greatest? But notice what happens when we have those type of arguments. In the gospel story, when things heat up, some of the disciples run away out of fear. Others learn to betray, convinced that they are right in their cause. Or when faced with the opposition, some come out swinging, as Peter did on this night in the Garden of Gethsemane, taking out his sword and swinging at the first enemy he sees. In sharp contrast, Jesus did none of these. In fact, he does the opposite. He told Peter to put away his sword, and then Jesus reached out to heal the damage done to his enemy. Even those who betray and deny him, Jesus serves as he gives down on his knees and washes the feet of his disciples. In doing so, he reminds us all that it's not about who is right or best or greatest. Instead, it is about being loving and kind and decent. It is about reaching out and impacting the lives of others for the better, one person at a time. Love one another, says Jesus, for I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done to you. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. That is our mission. It's our identity. And the amazing part about it it is that it is also gift. For on this night, Jesus stepped in and did the very thing he commanded of us. He showed us love and mercy and compassion. On this night, he lets us experience the very thing that he wants us to be, forgiven and loved people. What an amazing gift that he shares with us. May you experience this great gift as you come to the table of the altar, as you receive Christ's body and blood and hear the words broken and shed for you. May you also experience this gift and the many acts of love and compassion shown to you by the members of Christ's body, the church. Every time someone calls you by name or prays for you, Every time someone places a hand on your shoulder or offers you a sign of support or shares the burden of your cross, as Simon of Cyrene did for just a little while. Every time someone calls you on the telephone or sends you a card reminding you of their love and care or their concern. These are all ways in which the body of Christ shares the gift of God's love with you. 
May these things be loving reminders of God's passion and God's compassion for you. Likewise, on the days ahead, may we ever be on the lookout for opportunities to be the body of Christ, for the, to have the opportunity to get down on our hands and our knees and serve. May we look for the stranger among us, May we look for the person who hungers. May we look for the person in need of a word of kindness or concern. May we be brave enough to put an end to arguments which divide and instead live out our mission in common and our common identity as God's gifted people who are beloved and who are blessed to love and to serve one another. In Jesus' name, thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to join Melissa in singing our uh, hymn of the day, hymn number 666, What Wondrous Love Is This? Hymn number 666. together as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At our in-person worship this evening, at the end of our service, we will um, strip the altar in preparation for Good Friday. It is symbolic of the humiliation that Jesus suffered um, as he was on being led forward to his crucifixion. Tonight, we leave our service in silence to return tomorrow for Good Friday. 
Um, tonight, as you leave, I encourage you to pick up your Bibles and to read Psalm 22, which is the traditional reading at the end of Monday, Thursday's service. And it begins with the words that Jesus utter, utters from the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 22. Amen.